Alrighty guys, it looks like I have one final message. Um, I just discovered this last thing which is going to blow your guys' mind. But check this out. So, first of all, I am a great grand descendant of the prophet Brigham Young, who's the second prophet of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is often referred to as the LDS Church or the Mormon Church. And... There's, there's texts from secretaries writing Brigham Young's words that say, like, that say that Adam was God and not Joseph Smith. And so Joseph Smith said it and Brigham Young says, as Joseph Smith said, Adam is God. And that was written down and recorded and stored in church history. In the 19, and like, there was another three prophets probably all the way until the 1900s when there was three prophets all the way to the 1900s when they continued to preach that Adam was God and then after the 1900s, no more. And they changed it and they said that Adam was Angel Michael and just one of God's great men. But we all know it was God himself. And that's why he lived for a thousand years, 994 years, I think. And then... Everyone that comes after that is a tainted gene of him. And so they live for less time. And every prophet lived for less time, less time, less time. So you get to today where like you're lucky to make it to a hundred. Where back in the day when we were when they were close to God as descendants, they would live eight hundred years, seven hundred years, six hundred years, five hundred years. And it just kept going down. If you read the Bible, it clearly says that. Um but, um, so I went into Joseph Smith's patriarchal blessing. And now a patriarchal blessing is basically something that, like, it could be, like, messages of how to attain the things that you want. It could be messages about trials you might endure in your life. It could be messages about um, how your life ends and maybe even potentially what happens, like, after you die. Um, and so it's not necessarily all like for living people and it's not something that you can just always turn to, but, um, basically somebody has in a church has to be announced as the patriarch and as the patriarch, this person is able to give such blessings and they write it down and they get the people keep this blessing with them their whole life. And most people don't even share. I mean, I haven't read anyone's patriarchal blessings from my family and different stuff like that. I don't know. Like, maybe they intentionally don't share. I don't know. But I never received one, which was super weird because I did everything the church asked me to do. I was a deacon and a teacher, a priest. Uh, I was an Eagle Scout. I, like, it doesn't make sense. Like, my family, the only thing they cared about was that I do all the things the church requires. So... What's likely is that I was born, it was a special day, everyone knew about it, and it was like, okay, God's here on earth, and now it's Satan's battle against God, and the whole world is in on it, and I have to conquer Satan by myself, and then I own everything. And so, this sounds like a pretty good uh, life goal to me, something worth dying for. So again, I am Brigham Young's descendant. Now, I want you to imagine, if you had three wishes, what would you wish for? I mean, if you're a Christian, you'd wish for that Jesus comes and saves us all tomorrow, right? Like, what else could you wish for? So check this out. My great ancestor, who was the exalted second prophet of the church, and the way he became the prophet. So, like, a lot of people think that Mormons are involved with polygamy and, like, a lot of weird stories that they hear have to do with Mormons. But what happened was when Joseph Smith died, the first prophet of God, since freaking, I don't know who the last prophet was. It was probably Paul after, like, I don't know which prophet lived the longest um, after Jesus died, before they were all killed, but... Um, hang on, lost my thought. Oh, so Joseph Smith, for two, I mean, almost 2,000 years, first prophet of God. And when he dies, there's the 200 most loyal members of the church, of a church that can't be more than 10,000 people, probably a thousand. 
and he stands up in front of these 200 people to speak and say what he thinks. And as he speaks, a window opens in front of his face, and it's Joseph Smith saying the words. And at this point, the evil, corrupt people that think that they're, because they're bloodline that they're special decided that they're going to go start their own church because they're the bloodline of Joseph Smith. Well, guess what, Mother Eppers? I'm the bloodline of Brigham Young. Now, that's not like... Like, typically, I wouldn't say that means anything. Like, I hate bloodlines. I've always hated kings. I've always hated all these people. Like, they're just disgusting. So what is so special about Brigham Young? Well, he went to Joseph Smith Sr., who was the patriarch, who gave Joseph Smith his patriarchal blessing, which I already made a video on. You can go back and check, which is also about me. And now the second prophet, who happens to be my ancestor, what does he get a right? Because again, if you're a Christian, the only thing that you would write is that Jesus comes tomorrow if it's your wish, right? But you can't say Jesus comes tomorrow because like, that's a wish that like, God would tell him not to write. Like, If he's truly a prophet of God, like God's plan's got to happen and Satan's got to have his day and become as powerful as he's ever been and then God got to shut him down. And so check this out. Here's the story of Brigham Young's patriarchal blessing. Brother and sisters, you have inspired leaders, and we were touched. And I, I and your, our daughter, Mindy, that remarkable rendering of an anthem written by Crawford Gates. I am here having set aside the prepared talk that I had and hope you will permit me to open my heart on another topic. Let's begin with a glimpse of church history. One day in Nauvoo, Brigham Young, not long in the church, meaning he hasn't been a member very long, approached the prophet's father, who was the patriarch. I would like, he said, a patriarchal blessing, which is all you got to do to get one, and the patriarch's supposed to give it to you. For some reason, the senior, Joseph Smith, was committed to something, could not pull away, and said, Brother Brigham Young, now, you know he's, he may have said more than this, or Brigham Young just knew, and he knew, and they just kind of gave each other that look of, you know, you know who God is, you're exalted. And he says, you write anything that you want on this paper, and I will sign it as the patriarch, and with my power, your writings will be fulfilled. Well, guess what? I will bet my life on it. His writing was that his descendant will come, will he, his seed will be so righteous in the faith of the church that is the true and only one church of God that it will create a family worthy enough to bear the child God and raise him so that one day all things might be fulfilled and God might show us the way as a, as a people to Jesus and destroy the wicked. Bet my life on it. 